I'll be introducing our fourth speaker for today in the person of Dr. Leonard Chuta. He's the chairman and CTO, Smart Business Operating Systems, SBOS, Code Limited, Shanghai, China. A brief bio. Leonard Chuta graduated from Shanghai Jiatong University and Thai School of Management with focus on innovation management. He's the founder and CTO of SBOS AI Technology Limited. Before SBOS, Leo was the director at Hewlett Packard, HP, where he led multinational streams to deliver IT solutions to Fortune 500 companies, such as BMW and Volkswagen. SBOS is an intelligent ERP platform for managing company sales, procurement, and production processes. SBOS consume customers are fast growing companies struggling with the complexity of managing high volume of transactional data in Excel spreadsheets or fully matured companies looking at ways to optimize their production process. Dr. Leonard will be addressing us on lessons learned from over 30 enterprise resource planning ERP digital transformation projects. So over to you, Dr. Leo. It's great having you with us. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. This is a, an honor for me to be here. And uh, I think I, I have a lot of pleasure, you know, the past people have been very great, you know. Okay, so um, this presentation is basically like sharing experience and some of my knowledge that I've gained uh, throughout the years. You know, it's like for someone that is trying to do the same thing, maybe they can learn from this and then try to like adjust uh, or plan better what they're trying to do, you know. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Can I share my screen? Is it possible? Yeah. Yes, it's possible. Seems to be blocked. Okay. So I have it here. Okay. Yes. That's it. Okay, so it's going to sound like a sales pitch, but it's not, <laughs> it's not, I'm not here to sell anything, you know, because this is something I do every day, every time I talk to people, it's always about our product. So there might be one or two things that I'm trying to explain, it might sound like trying to sell something, but no, this is more like uh, trying to share uh, the experience of an African uh, child trying to build something uh, uh, on its own and trying to like getting other people to to keep on and, and join towards this, uh, this goal. Okay, so uh, I've made some slides here. Uh, I will try to keep it short. Uh, so basically, um, four four points discuss a little bit of information about me, just like to lay some groundwork, and then the story of SBOS, and then uh, the talking about uh, typical journey of our customer towards uh, ERP digital transformation and then try to look at some of the uh, use cases that we have done. Okay, so um, I am from Cameroon, uh, Bamileke tribe. So uh, if someone is from Cameroon, you know, you know very well the Bamileke people. You know, we are people that you give us a job, we are going to thank you, do the job for some time, learn very well, and then move on and do it by ourselves. <laughs> okay, so, um, my first company was around 2008, 2009. In this company, uh, basically, uh, it was a very small company. And we provided uh, consulting solutions using a product from another company. So basically, we didn't own the product, but we owned the solution. And uh, the, the, the problem we faced during this case was that uh, once we go to a big customer and then we describe the solution to them, Basically, after we leave, they will find another company to come and do the product, the project because the product wasn't our product. We we're just building the solution on top of another person's uh, product. So this was not a scalable uh, uh, business model, and uh, we have to like find for an alternative solution. So I went back to school, right? I went back to school to start a business, but unfortunately, uh, you cannot do an MBA for free so i needed someone to pay for my studies right then so i had to do a phd in a, in 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 management focusing on innovation management basically like trying to learn how to build 
a product and how to change that product into a business and uh, into a company. Okay, so I was on campus like one year full time, right? Uh, because uh, I need to attend the, the, the coursework and all those things. And but after that one year, I moved on to get a job at uh, one of the Fortune 500 companies, uh, HP. So at HP, I would join HP as a solution architect because in my previous company, uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, solution architect work. So I joined uh, HP as a solution architect, but I did this job only for uh, less than a month because uh, once I joined HP, the task that I was given basically I kind of like self self organized so you don't need to tell me what to do just need to tell me tell me what you want and i will organize and get all the resources to 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 achieve that goal so from this point of view i from this uh, after this after about less than a month my managers and everyone involved with me they started giving me all the project management role so from that on i move on to do project management and later on a uh, project director which was kind of also a great opportunity for me to like really learn how to how a very uh, big company is operated, you know. So I did a lot of uh, big projects for uh, Fortune 500 companies with the brand of HP. So I was in, a, most of these projects were in China, but towards the end, I did some international projects with uh, companies in, in US and, and France. So um, I was in HP for a very long time, like for someone who is by UK. So I was in HP for about six years. So that was a very long, long time, you know. And so during this, so during this uh, uh, time, uh, basically around the first uh, two years, I had to go into the office and doing everything like the normal employee has to do. But uh, towards the end, after I have demonstrated uh, the value that I could provide to the team and all those things, I had more freedom to like uh, not go to the office every day. So I could start some other projects on, on my own, right? So that's when we have the idea of, um, starting this uh, uh, product or this uh, at that time it wasn't a business it was just some tech ideas that we have you know and wanted to solve a problem that we're doing we're kind of like repeating things the same thing every time we do a project right so the idea was that every single solution we implemented was just a combination of tables forms and charts and workflow so uh, instead of building those individual solutions, we decided to just build those basic components and then we can just assemble them to any solution once the customer uh, give us a, their requirement. Okay, so um, I left HP after we have like, after we got the first customers for this uh, particular project. So uh, we had, a, we had a, a tech that was working and then it was already in, in, in production. That's when I left HP focus on this uh, project. So I've been on this project now for almost four years now, uh, doing the same thing every day in and out. Uh, so basically now I'm working on this project and then there have been some opportunities in the AI industry. So I'm also working on a, an autonomous drone project now. So the reason I'm doing this project is because uh, we want to like uh, assimilate the artificial intelligence uh, technology into our product and um, AI, autonomous drone seems to be an easy way for us to get this, uh, this, this technology and this knowledge. And beside that, so we also have a customer that is paying for this uh, autonomous drone project. So we have someone who is paying for the project, meaning that this is a problem that is like worth uh, spending our time doing. Because if, it is, if, if there's nobody willing to pay for the product, don't do it. Because if you can convince somebody to pay for it without any product, you won't be able to convince 1,000 people to pay for it after you build it. So you must get at least one customer. That's from my experience, you know, every product you build, you must be able to convince, if, especially when you're doing B2B, you must be able to convince someone to pay before you start doing the, the product. Otherwise, it's just going to be some kind of like uh, research at the end of the day. There's no one willing to pay for the tech. Okay, so... Uh, so this is that is my kind of my background. So this will kind of give us an idea of why we're why I'm doing what uh, I'm doing now. So okay, this, so this is the journey that we have gone through with SBOS. I don't know if you can see my screen completely. I have something blocking here. So let me try to take it out. Okay. So SBOS, I started it when we were back in HP. So 2017, we had our first uh, customer, and then we had uh, then I left HP in 2008. So 
um, our first customer was kind of like, I mean, it wasn't really perfect. There was a lot of box in the tech. So we went there on Friday, discussed with this customer. And then during the weekend, my partner just went back to the customer and signed the contract, right? And so that was it. We were, we were, we were on board. There was no way back. We had to deliver, right? And so we struggled out towards uh, at least one or two months to have something working for the customer. And the customer, their mindset was kind of like very open mindset people. You know, they were like willing to try new stuff. You no, know, so that was like one of the advantage for us. And this particular customer that's still with us today, you know, because our product is very sticky. Once you move on to the product, it's difficult to, 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 to move out of it because it's kind of like the whole, the whole platform you use to manage your business. You know, it has everything. It has your business processes, knowledge about your business, how your employees, employees will learn how to use a product. You know, so it's very difficult to move out of this product and then learn everything again from scratch. So most of our, of our customers, when they come on board, they will be with us for many years from you now. Okay, so after we get this first project and we had tech, but we didn't have the industrial knowledge because we're going into a field that needed us to have some kind of industrial knowledge. So we're going to manufacturing. I need to know like what exactly, how a factory is being managed, how a factory is operated. So some of the things we, we face, some of, so our main problem during that time was that we didn't have, enough knowledge about uh, the industry, right? So luckily there was uh, opportunities in Sujo where we have the government of Sujo uh, supporting entrepreneurs and we moved to Sujo and at this point, we had some very good resources and there were also a lot of uh, manufacturing companies in this location who so basically uh, into, at this place, we learn a lot from our customers, right? Kind of like learn the, the, the core processes of manufacturing from the customers themselves. You know, there's no book that will teach you how to do an ERP. You, know, you have to do it on site by the customer to really learn how it works. You know. Okay, so uh, in 2021, we have developed now a standard solution that we can roll out for uh, any uh, manufacturing company. Basically, it's a solution that we can roll out very quickly within a week, and then we can spend maybe two weeks to like train the customer on how to use, use the platform, right? So basically now 2022, we are like uh, trying to scale our business model because we can do like uh, 15 projects a year, but how do we do 50 projects a year? How do we do 100 projects a year? So those are the things that we're trying to solve now. I want to go to the next, okay. So these are some of our customers. So uh, I didn't have time to translate them in English, so, but anyway, uh, these are just some of the brands that we have worked with. Okay, so this is a typical journey for the uh, digital transformation for our company, for our, for our customers. So basically, uh, it's for the customers who are doing that in China, nobody is using paperwork, nobody, it's managing a factory. Even if you open a factory today, at the least you will have, uh, you'll be doing in Excel, right? You will not be taking your orders and, write and recording on paper. So in, it'll, be, it'll be in Excel. So if you are still using paper, so basically you wouldn't be our, our target customer. So the people that we go to, they are already like, they've already moved one step above this uh, uh, digital transformation journey. So they are at least, they are already like using Excel, they're using some kind of software. Maybe they have an accounting software but they don't have the whole integrated process. So they have individual departments trying to share data with Excel and then this kind of like cause some kind of uh, inconsistency. So if you are like 10 people in the company, it makes sense. But now if you are like uh, 50 people, 100 people, then you have a big problem to solve. So in that case, uh, there's no other way out rather than to uh, uh, implement an ERP solution that will help you to integrate all those uh, departments so that they can uh, operate in a very uh, uh, smooth way. So I'm going to try to be very quick. So during a, a, an ERP project, what we do is like we look at the culture of the company, we look at the organizational structure, we look at the processes and the data that has to be captured uh, during their, their business. So the really the focus itself is really on the processes, right? So that is a, that is the main thing. That is the main focus. The processes that we implement uh, for the customers. So what what uh, so once you implement the ERP. So what, it will what will happen is that the ERP is going to help to improve the flow of information within the company and uh, across the boundaries of the company as well. That means there will be better flow of information to the customers and to the suppliers, and that will also improve the product flow and cash flow. Right. So for a company to really uh, 
get value out of ERP, they must be already have, having good business. So if they don't have any cash flow, there's no need for them to join an ERP. But if they're struggling with optimizing their processes, uh, then when they put an ERP, they're going to get a very uh, high value from that uh, project. Okay, my computer. Okay, so this is like a summary of the processes we implement. So uh, I won't go into too much detail, but it's basically implementing the sales process. So the sales start with a quotation and it ends with a account receive. And then the purchasing process start with a purchase request and it ends with the account paid. Right? In between that, there's a production process. So basically this is how it works for most of the manufacturing companies. That there are some differences at at the, the level of each of the these this blocks, you know, because they're for uh, producing different products, the, the process might be a little bit different, but on a high level, this is how it is for most of the manufacturing companies. Okay, so I, uh, I want to like point out some of the customers that we have done. I'm trying not to, because, I'm trying to be like not in not going into too much detail because we don't have much time. So we implemented one project for uh, China Aerospace. This is a very very big company, and you know, and just to get on onto their their supplier list is not an easy task. You know, so but basically what happened is that they have seen our solution uh, at one of their suppliers, and then they like the solution. So when they they, they call us, we didn't go to them. They call us, and then. They help us to kind of like clear some of the requirements to get onto their supplier list. So basically, it was easy for us to, to close this deal. And what we did for them is like management of uh, uh, ITO device production. So, I mean, they had an ERP before we came to them, but there are certain things that uh, the current ERP system wasn't uh, good at. And they didn't want to, because on our, on our platform, it's very easy. To implement those things and cost effective, so they, they they choose to implement those solution with us rather than to go and uh, invest a lot in changing the existing ERP system. So we basically focus on their production line, the shop floor management, and uh, their production planning. Okay, so we're just gonna skip this. If there's question later on, then I can come back to more detail on this. Okay, so another project we did is for this Japanese group of companies. So for them, we they have also like uh, seen our solution. So they recommended uh, to us by one of our customers. So so far, uh, most of our business comes from uh, customer recommendations. So when we do for one customer, uh, they like it. Uh, they talk about it to their friends and to their customers and to their suppliers, and then we get other uh, business uh, from this word of mouth. Okay. So in, for this company, we implemented a complete process, sales and production, purchasing, warehouse management and, and, and finance. And then so far, uh, we have done only one project uh, in Africa. Actually, I just added this slide just now. Uh, uh, this project we did, it was in, I think it was in 2000. So this was for uh, Zanaco. And so what we, so this actually, this project was brought to us by one of my classmates you know, now in Zambia. So he's the one who contacted us also to do this project because they had a solution, but it wasn't working. So they need something that could that is more stable. That's why he contacted us. So in this project, what we did is like uh, on the ATM section, there were kind of like uh, some transactions were not properly recorded. Because uh, when you, once you, you want to withdraw money from the ATM, uh, this transaction has to be recorded on the ATM and also in the in the back end, what they call the core banking system. So. For example, if you want to redo, if you want to redraw uh, uh, ten dollars, and then uh, the ATM says that okay, you have already uh, redrawn uh, ten dollars, but actually uh, your bank account has uh, deduced uh, 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 five dollars. So what we do is that at the end of the day, we will like uh, uh, collect all the data from the ATM. So this is it's automatic; it's not manually. So they will have a software on the ATM that will collect all the transaction log push it to the back end, and then we will compare with what is from the core banking system and then generate some exceptional reports that they can know, like they can go in and figure out if there's uh, some customer has overdrawn or uh, they need to like uh, give, uh, uh, give more money to some customers, okay? 
So uh, this is what I have for you guys uh, today. So I, I wanted to make it very short just to give, uh, give you guys some ideas. If someone wants to know more detail, then uh, maybe we can uh, discuss further after, after, the, after the online meeting. So now uh, I'm open for questions. Is there any questions? Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Leo, for a wonderful presentation. I was just looking and waiting for what's coming up next towards the next slide, looking at all the beautiful uh, schematic layouts that we've been shown. So please, it's time for our Q&A. If you have questions regarding the presentation that we've just had on lessons learned from over 30 enterprise resource planning, digital transformation projects, please kindly send in your questions or use the emoji buttons to raise your hand. Okay, yes, Emmanuel, I can see your hand raised. Uh, yeah, you thank, yeah. thank you, thank you so much uh, ahead. Uh, for that. Yeah. And uh, thanks uh, for that uh, wonderful presentation from Dr. Liu. I think uh, Dr. Liu, I met him sometimes uh, in, in Sujo, I think about two years ago. So my name is uh, Emmanuel, Dr. Emmanuel. So actually I'm, I'm from Shanghai Tech University. So I'm actually major in biomedical research. So I want to ask I, from your presentation, Dr. Liu, it's like you have got a lot of experience from the company. So uh, how is it very possible for, for young researchers or people that have not really got a lot of experience maybe in the industry to actually venture into the startup of a business? Because uh, from your speech, I discovered that you, you you actually deliver with a lot of confidence, and which is as a result of experience you have gathered for many years. So, what what can you advise? What advice can you give to the young, uh, maybe to the new graduate student that actually want to commence their company, maybe in any field? So, thank you. That's my question. Okay, so thank you very much. So I think I remember you. I thought I think we met at one of the. It was an event organized by the Sujo government. You know, I think I remember very well. Okay, so thank you very much for your question. So uh, the thing is that in business development is all about uh, the relationships. I mean, the people you meet today, these are going to be your partners in the future, right? So every time you meet someone, you have to try to leave a good impression on that person. So actually now like we have like people that used to work for our customers that are now joining our team to work with us because during the project we did with that customer, we left a good impression on that uh, particular uh, employee. So when you're at school, your classmate, as I just said, one of the points that we had from Zanako uh, from Zambia was given to us by one of my classmates. So once, when, when you are in school, you are basically building your network, right? So that's, that's a very important point. You know? So uh, as you go out now, you have an idea, you have to try to keep the people that share your vision around you. Don't keep people that like, uh, are not interested in what you're doing or will try to like change your mindset, you know. So surround your people, surround yourself with people that share your vision and then uh, try to keep good relationship with your friends now because those are your partners for your, in the future. Bye. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 Emmanuel, has your question been addressed? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, thank you so much. I think it's a very uh, relationship here. Yeah. So, and uh, I hope uh, when the epidemic is over, we can still meet in Shanghai, because presently I'm in Shanghai. So thank you, thank you. Okay, that was a good one. Uh, in the chat, we have a question from Shehu. Dr. Liu, do you plan to expand to Africa? Uh, yes, yeah, so so uh, Africa is like the, the the end goal for us, you know, the end game, you know. So because uh, everything we do out here, we are basically just learning, and then uh, all this knowledge that we, we we gather here, basically we end up in Africa and try to how we can share this knowledge with, uh, uh, back home and try to like improve our own situation back home. Because no matter what you do outside, if your home is not good, it doesn't really add much to what you are doing, you know. So we'll be going to Africa. The thing is that the business, uh, the situation back there might be a little bit challenging because we did one project uh, already in Africa. 
and uh, we learn also something from that project. So the approach that we have in China is a little bit different from Africa, in a, a little bit different from what we have in Africa. So some the, what my partners back home have told me is that people prefer that you build something and then they look at it and then they give they pay for it after you have finished building it. But for us, most of our project is like someone has to pay, customer has to pay, and then we do the solution for them. So we are going to see if there's a, a way to build something that is going to be uh, more suitable for the African market, you know, something that is more in line with our own our own values and our own way of thinking back home. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Leo. We'll be all looking eagerly, we'll be looking eagerly forward to all that. Uh, another question here says, Dr. Leo, thanks for the presentation. For now, does your company make the ERP software or still sales oriented? As at when you started, were you techie or a developer or a service provider only? That's from KK. Can you repeat the question? Okay, he says, for now, does your company make the ERP software or it's still sales oriented? And also, as at when you started, were you techie or a developer? or a service provider only? Okay, so I got her question. So this is a, this is a very important question because uh, when in my, my first company, I mentioned about my first company where we used to use the product of another, another company to build our solution on top. So because of this uh, problem, the business was not scalable and then we have to like drop this business. So the product we have now is something that we have built by ourselves from scratch. You know, it's totally, Built by us, by our team. So once when I was in HP, I met some partners also with uh, some guys from IBM and some guys from Google, and also some of my current partners. Uh, they, are, they are like from Samsung, and then we build this product all in house. So this is something that we totally own it. And there's some key advantage to this product compared to other ERP product. That's why we are still in business today. Otherwise, we have been we have, should have been out of business years ago. So I won't go into the detail of that, right? So for me, my background is in tech and business because my, my education is a Bachelor of Information Engineering, a Master of Computer Technology Application. Then because I needed business knowledge, I have to switch a 360 degree to do a PhD in, in management. Okay. Thank you so much for those responses. Uh, some other questions here. Dr. Leo, do you have any customer from Africa, especially from your country? And uh, let me add the follow up to that says, Dr. Leo, do you plan to teach your knowledge to young Africans? The first uh, one was, do you have customer for Africa, especially from your country? And the second is, do you plan to teach your knowledge to young Africans? Okay, so uh, we don't have any customers in Cameroon right now. Right, we have, we have done only one project in Africa so far, and it was uh, for Zanaco, and was even done through another company because my 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 classmate was back uh, in in Zambia. He also has a company there, so he's the one that was doing that project, and he had some technical problems, and he had to contact us here to help him solve those problems and rebuild the solution. So that's that's the only project we have done in Africa so far, and we will maybe in the future we want to do more projects in Africa. And then, so far as concerning knowledge transfer, you know what we are trying to do is, is more than is more than an individual, right? We're trying to gather knowledge that we can we can transfer back home, you know. So like if we just graduate and then go back home, we really want to go back home, but uh, the condition, as someone just mentioned, maybe lack of finance and also like uh, our business environment doesn't give us this opportunity because like yeah, I've been to at least one hundred more than one hundred factories, you know. So that means that there's a lot of experience a lot of knowledge seeing how the production happens in different factories so that's something that uh, maybe if i went back home straight away i won't be able to acquire that knowledge but uh, to conclude i'm very open to share this knowledge you know to uh, to our uh, brothers and sisters that are like interested in in in, in knowing more about uh, ERP because it takes us four years to gather this knowledge so this is something that we don't want to throw away we want to like take it and then share it to our, our own to our brothers and sisters no thank you okay and okay I, let me take the last question from emmanuel it says is there an opportunity for interns in your company for students in china uh yes there they might there are opportunity there are opportunities for interns you know actually today just before this uh, this uh, this afternoon i actually had like some 
some universities from Hong Kong uh, contacted us also like pushing some intern students for to our company. So yeah, there are opportunities for intern. You know, uh, we can we're always uh, welcome welcoming people to come and join us. You know. Okay, so please, if you're interested in internship, his contact is shared on the screen. Feel free to get in touch, and let's collaborate and do wonders together. Thank you so much, Dr. Leo. It's been great hearing from you and the work that you are doing, as well as all the hands-on experience you've had to share with us. We appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, going on with what we have for today, we've listened to four speakers, starting from Ms. Manal, Professor Asuzu. We've listened to Dr. Margaret and now Dr. Liu. All this is driving towards the AU 2063 agenda for Africa. So we've learned so much and we really appreciate each and every one of us that has turned out for this program. With that, the meeting will be coming to a close and we'll take our closing remark from Dr. Saka Kunda. He's a postdoctoral research fellow in China. Dr. Saka, are you there, please? Okay. Hello. Yes, so we can, can hear you. Hear me? Yes. Allow me to take this opportunity on behalf of OAD to sincerely thank all the presenters for the tremendous work and investment and effort that they put in place to ensure that we benefit from their presentation as we look forward to AU 2063 agenda. God willing, we pray that we shall be alive to witness and to enjoy the fruit of their labor. And some of the key tenants that I picked from the presenters, particularly from Professor Isaac Asuzu, is about unity that is a form of collaboration, grant writing, I think these are some of the key things that we need as upcoming researchers, scientists, because in science, scientific research, without collaboration, we cannot achieve much. And a question that popped up from most of us is how to to learn how to do grant writing. I think this is an area which I will request that one day we invite the professor again to teach us, to lecture us, to advise us on grant writing. I am now at the verge of completing my postdoc. I have never written a grant. No one has, has ever asked me to do it. So I'll also benefit from it. I don't know how to write it. I'll probably get online and learn, but you know, when you're learning it from someone who has done it with experience and is there giving a presentation, that is much more impactful than just reading some write-ups on the internet. We also had a presentation on research policy nexus and citizen participation through civil society organizations. And we learned that we can start such organizations. We don't have to sit down and wait for manna from heaven to descend in form of money. Eh? Then we wake up to start things. No, no, we can always start something and reach out to people that can fund such initiatives. So we also heard from Dr. Leo about ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. 
are not good with computer related things, but I could pick that the presentation was so elaborate, educative, insightful, and full of investment. And we hope that those of us who are in this area shall follow up with him and tap from his wealth of resources. I appreciate you very much for your time, the presenters, and those of us who came. I would, I would not want to call them the congregation, but the members of OAD who joined the meeting tonight in China, now is night. Some parts of Africa is daytime. I appreciate your effort. I appreciate your time. And I'm looking forward to meeting you again. God willing. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Saka Konda, for that uh, wonderful closing remark. And uh, we also thank all our participants for the day two. Today marks the day two of this program. It's running for seven days. I really appreciate your attendance. We say a big thank you to our guest speakers, the keynote um, address, as well as um, other speakers that we had for today's event. So to finally wrap up tonight's event, uh, or today's events, as the case may be, please uh, would like to take a screenshot, a photo shot, and uh, we'll kindly request that you can open your videos or open your cameras, and then we can do this together in the spirit of OAAD. From all across the globe, all across the world, wherever you may be, as an African descent, joining us for this program. Kindly the spirit of Africa, not OAAD, not in only the spirit OAD, of Africa. <laughs> wow, I'm seeing Sui Hyang Po. Of the world, even we have people that are non Africans attending also. Exactly. I, like, this is wonderful. Dibadino, yeah. thank you so much for joining up with us. We appreciate you all. Please, I'm still waiting thank for some persons to turn on their cameras. Thank you so much. If you have someone beside you that has gotten <laughs> too absorbed, tell them that the meeting is almost wrapping around you up. They should wake up. They should come up. Let's take the photos together. Mm. Dr. Leo, gift. Please, let's open our cameras. OK, I think I can start off with what we have here. So just give a big, wonderful smile on your face because Africa is going places. <laughs> Some of the smiles are so wonderful. <laughs> okay, if we can do this for the Africa that we want. Yes. Please, I'm still taking the screenshot. Don't stop smiling yet. <laughs> the smile will finish very soon. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we need it to remain because we are going higher and higher. Okay, I'm on the second screen now. Kindly turn on your cameras, please, if you're still booting. We are almost done. I hope the smile is still there. And it's voila, fine. we've been able to capture the three pages. So that was beautifully done. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much one, uh, to each and every one of us for your participation. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Please kindly invite sure. others. I hand over to our president, Dr. Elijah Odisa. Okay, bye. Yes, yes, I'm just, um, we hand over to everybody. Everybody is okay. interested now. Yes, yes. So the floor is us. Feel free to interact, bond, get to interact and um, Yes, hang out with each other. Let's get Looking forward to uh, you know meeting us tomorrow again and um, to enjoy some time together again uh, for the various some um, stages for tomorrow. And um, yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for taking your time to be here. And um, uh, implementation 
is coming. So please watch out for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.